have to deal with a subject that I can't even conceive of how people can get away with it, much less read their Bible or talk to God or even pray without not choking on their own words. I mean, Christians who hate the President of the United States of America? Are you kidding me? Where do you get the reality check that comes into play that tells you for a fact that you need to repent? Because this is what the reality check is for you right now. Talk to God. I don't care how you do it. I don't care where you do it. I don't care when you do it. I care that you just do it. Because you have absolutely no scriptural foundation, no bottom line ability to stand there and to tell me that you can turn around and hate the President of the United States right now, who happens to be President Barack Obama. Hate him and get away with it and stand before Jesus and say, Oh, accept me, Lord, into the kingdom of heaven. Excuse me? I don't care what your politics is. I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't vote, period, for the very reason that I can act and look and see you right now and see that this is why I would not vote. Because look at what you've done, Republican, Democrat, Independent, whoever you are. Now you hate. You've created a system of hatred for a person who's been elected into the United States government of America. And you're creating an environment of hate and violence that's going to get someone killed. You have absolutely no reason whatsoever, O oh thou Christian, to be able to say you hate or to promote hate or to promote gossip, slander, and all the other things that go with the political system. I, excuse me, you have not suffered unto death, nor have you been under Roman authority when Jesus himself did not fight the Roman procurator or deny the availability of that authority that was over him and allowed him to go to the cross and to die. And you're going to tell me you have a right to stand there and to cause division and strife and malice and anger and wrath among fellow Christians to go against God's given authority at this time who set as over us so that we would obey and we would be protected? Excuse me? Where do you read your Bible at? Because it smells like the toilet. And I hate to say it, but something's stinking thinking around here. And you need to get a grip on the reality of what God has said. God put people in authority for a specific purpose. Because if we challenge authority, we challenge God. Are you ready to put yourself in that position? Are you going to tell God he made a mistake? Because you see, it's not about getting him unelected. You can do that. That's freedom. Oh, shoot, you can say what you want. Except for the Bible doesn't say you can say what you want. You don't have freedom of speech when it comes to the Word of God. You're not able to go out and slander. You're not able to go out and lie. You're not able to go out and cheat. You're not given grace so that you could go out and do these things. Give me a break. Do you think that you're going to inherit the kingdom of God because you think that you've given the gospel to somebody that doesn't deserve it? Because you're out there promoting hatred? No. You haven't done the things that Jesus said to do. To love the brethren. To love your enemies even as he loved you. You don't lay down your life for the only those who you think, oh, well, they're worthy of it. You lay down your life for everyone, period. So you can choose to get the next person elected. But you don't do it by tearing a person apart. That's for the world. What are you, a dog? Do you gnash on bones? Do you tear at flesh? Do you chew your meat? Excuse me? Are you a Christian? What do you think a Christian is? Where did you define God as love and come up with this whole idea of being able to attack powers and principalities and these things that are in charge of us? Oh, spiritually, yes, powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness, high places I could see you going after. But flesh and blood, how dare you? And you represent yourself as a Christian? Excuse me? Huh. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, you have no authority to do so, period. Get it out of your system right now. Don't be a disciple. Go somewhere else. Go play the game in the sandbox and start throwing mud in each other's eye and stomping on each other and hitting each other until somebody comes along and breaks up your little fight, your little squabble, and says, hey, could you go to your corner and you go to your corner and don't ever act like you're a Christian because we wouldn't want you to get along and love one another, now would we? Hello? Please. When you go and abuse grace 
you are splattering the blood of Jesus Christ among swine and pigs. You're not using that which God has given you, the Holy Spirit, in order to bless those that curse you, in order to minister to those that despitefully use you, in order to be a light shining in the wilderness when darkness is all about you. What do you think you are, a Christian? No, you're not. Because out of your own mouth has spewed bile and disgust and hatred and wrath. Oh, but he deserves it. And you don't? Hello? The judgment that God has reserved for the ungodly will come upon you. Don't you get it yet? As you judge, you'll be judged. All you who hate Obama, guess what? You're being judged right now. Yes, you've proven that provocation has caused you to lose your faith. You've lost your way. Repent before it's too late or suffer the judgment that will come upon you. Because you may be spared losing your salvation. I don't have any control over that part. But God knows you may go into tribulation period and have to die for your faith. <laughs> Good luck. My, 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 I would much rather be one of the wise virgins who knowing these times that is trying to cause people to deal with the flesh, I wouldn't want to give in to my flesh and then suddenly act like I could hate all these different people hate Muslims, hate the president, hate Rick, whoa, whoa, not Rick Perry, uh, Rick Warren, hate Billy Graham. I mean, there, there's a famous pastor I know that's in a big mega ministry that hates Billy Graham of all things. Give me a break. Unbelievable. I can say this, the one thing that will stop you from getting into the rapture, to put it bluntly, will be hatred. If you have odd against your brother, you need to go reconcile it now. Get over it. Get done with it. Let it go. Quit doing it. You're causing other people around you to stumble. Get out of it. It's sinful. Get back to the peace, the love, the joy, the things that make for the meekness, the kindness, the temperance, the gentleness, the Spirit of God working in you. There is no Spirit of God when you're attacking the President of the United States of America. I know, I've watched and read and seen the works that you do. Holy cow, children of Satan, what are you doing? Dragging the name of the Savior through the mud? Oh my God. We're disciples, aren't we? We're following Jesus, shouldn't we? Isn't it about time to grow up and grow out of these stupid things? And he pitched his tent having Bethel on the west and high on the east. And there he built an altar. Worship is giving God the best that he has given you. Be careful what you do with the best you have. Whenever you get a blessing from God, give it back to him as a love gift. Take time to meditate before God and offer the blessing back to him in a deliberate act of worship. If you hoard anything for yourself, it will turn into spiritual dry rot as the manna did when it was hoarded. God will never let you hold a spiritual thing for yourself. It has to be given back to him that he may make it a blessing to others. God gave you your life. He said, go out, teach all nations, make disciples of all people, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, causing those that would see you to recognize the light that is within you. Would you turn that light to darkness? Don't look at the news if you can't get over your confusion of spirit that causes you to take the gospel that you were given to share with others and now you're going to turn around and preach a gospel of hatreds and divisions and strife for political means? Have done with it. Get over it. You can pray that God would turn the heart of the king any which way that he chooses and God will do it. You can say that God has the heart of the king in his own hands, and he is. He does. You can say that God appoints the king in places and causes them to rise up and to fall as he chooses, and he does. So who are you? You're an ambassador in a strange and foreign land. This is not your home. You are passing through this place. Quit trying to make it into something that's not for you. Go out and share what God wants you to do. Be the 
peacemaker in the political environment. Be the one who chooses the higher road and doesn't get into all the slander and the wrath and the malice and the yuck. If you got to be a Christian whatever politician, then for God's sakes, get off the tearing other people apart routine. The scriptures tell us that he who covers sin, but he who reveals sin separated fairly friends. So allow God to be the convictor, not you. Allow God to do his work, not you. Quit trying to be something you're not. You were called, chosen, and directed not to be an exposer or exposing yourself or someone else, but you're supposed to go out and heal, hear, obey what God says to do today. How sad it is that Jesus has to ask the question of you and I. And I know why. Because there is no doubt in my mind as I look at the Christian today and I can push the buttons just by simply saying, Rick Warren, President Obama, Democrat, Republican, and watch the Christians fall away. And Jesus says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith? I ask you, where is your faith, Christian? Why aren't you believing in the Bible and the Word of God as it says He puts them in charge? Why are you thinking that the political process is all about you and not about Him? Where did you go when you suddenly decided to follow the world and its ways and you left Jesus behind? Why are you blind now and don't know the truth? Why do you need me to tell you you're being unloving? and unforgiving and unmerciful when you hate and you are doing it when you hate the president of the United States of America who is your president don't give me all the garbage from the world about duly elected about how he's not this that or the other thing he is don't tell me what you think about whether he's saved or not he is responsible for himself before Jesus Christ, and he has said he is a Christian. You leave it at that. Do you love the President of the United States? Because if you don't, you need to re-examine your heart, and you need to challenge your soul into requiring itself to go before God and lay out your feelings. Because if you don't take up your cross and follow Jesus, if you don't deny yourself, you will carry that hatred into denying someone very close to you that you love, that you have given your life to, that you said you would be a witness for, that you would never deny him before man, except when it comes to the president or someone you hate. You can't be his disciple if you choose to. So turn around. Go back to studying. Go back to learning. Go back to being, sitting still, and asking God to show you where you went wrong. But if you would be like Jesus and want to pursue on to become his disciple, Bethel is a symbol of communion with God. Ai is a symbol of the world. Abraham pitched his tent between the two. The measure of the worth of our public activity for God is the private, profound communion we have with Him. Rush is wrong every time. There is always plenty of time to worship God. Quiet days with God may be a snare. We have to pitch our tents where we shall always have quiet times with God, however noisy our times with the world may be, and there are not three stages in there are not three stages in spiritual life, worship, wanting, and work. Some of us go in jumps like spiritual frogs when we jump from worship to waiting, from waiting to work, and God's idea is that the three should go together. There are always, they were always together in the life of our Lord. He was unhasting and he was unresting. It is a life of discipline that we cannot get into it all at once where you choose to have in your life as we, it's a different perspective than what's saying there, but we choose to have in our life our devotional time. 
that we are prepared for the day to do as God sends us to do, that we rest in Him when He tells us to rest, that we move forward in Him when He tells us to move forward, that we walk with Him when He tells us to walk, so that when we're confronted by those that hate, we're not going to jump on the bandwagon and be a part of the crowd that wants to crucify Him. Because what are you? Standing in the streets of Jerusalem, crucifying your Lord? If you hate President Obama or you hate anyone, you are. That's where you're at. Now you could say, God, I know I hate, help me. Now that's being honest. And you can work at it and ask God to change your heart. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever new. Change my heart, oh God. Make me like you because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Those are believed in should not perish, but ever has to die. God laid down his life. Not for the brethren. He laid down his life for the world. A disciple chooses to lay down his flesh, crucifies that thing because he's got his cross always ready there to put himself on it so that he would not be one of those haters or mockers or slanderers or backbiters or malicious or evil, but rather he would die on the cross so that he could live again unto the Spirit of God that we would be resurrected in the newness of life, that we could go forward and we could change the world. And we could change the world of the governments, the houses, the judiciaries, the people everywhere around us. If you just trust the Lord with all your heart, When I think of this time that we live in, and this message, I think it falls on deaf ears. I, I could be wrong. You know, I, I don't know on this one. The Lord may have something in store I have no idea and no knowledge of. But when I look around, I'm sorry, I have to pitch my tent somewhere else. I can't live in the place where you may be at. I can't walk in the way that you've chosen to go. I can't follow the crowds as they seek to crucify an innocent man. Oh, well, you know, he didn't fulfill what we wanted him to do. After all, Jesus didn't become the king of the Jews. He didn't deliver us from Rome, so crucify him. And President Obama didn't do like we wanted him to, did he? Since I don't vote, I don't worry about it. I'm thankful for President Obama being in office. I praise the Lord for him. I thank God that God has put him there because God put him there so God knows what's best. So I let God direct him as he chooses. And if I don't like one of the decisions, I pray that God will change his heart and that God will show me which way I should pray. And that I always pray first before I ask him to change his heart so that way I know which way I should pray. Because if God wants something to happen in the world, like the end of the world, then he's going to let certain people be in charge of it and they're going to go their own direction, you know? Kind of like Pharaoh, hello? So I don't mind someone being in office, I pray for them. I say, God, you know, bless them. God, help them. God, you know, cause them to come to a personal relationship with you. God, if it takes getting out of office to do that, save them. God, I don't care how you do it, but save them. My constant, fervent prayer for the President of the United States is that he would know Jesus in a personal and intimate way, and that he would be a father to his children and a husband to his wife, and that he would take care of those that are in his inner circle and those that are in his outer circle as much as he is given to do by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. That's my prayer. What's yours? Get killed? Die? Something stupid? The signs of the times are evident by the people that are in the body of Christ. I don't think we're seeing a great revival. If anything, I think we're seeing a great deflation of the Spirit of God as He begins to pull back the peace, the love, the joy, the meekness, the temperance, the kindness, the love, and the fear of the Lord, because I see people becoming more violent, less loving, less kind, less tender, less gentle, more and more able to just automatically take life, 
with no forethought and no consequence, seemingly. I see people choosing to say they're a Christian, but they don't have any kind of personal relationship with God, though they talk about it. So you ask them, well, what do you think God would say about hating the president? Well, I don't ask them about that. Of course I can hate the president. Really? Really? The difference between a disciple and a follower is a disciple talks directly to Jesus and asks him about everything. And when he has a question, he'll ask God. Because we're told by the scriptures that if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who braideth not, but give it to all men liberally. There is no reason to have any lack of wisdom. Even when you have an evil king, it says that the people suffer. But it says still to pray for him. It doesn't say revolt. It doesn't say to hate. It says to pray for because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness on high places. The battle you think you have with the President of the United States of America has nothing to do with the person. It has to do with what's behind that arena that's there. And you need to be praying that way and not demonstrating what kind of disciple you really are. God help us. God bless us. God cause us to repent, O oh Lord, our God. Cause us to re-examine our way and to look at the words we say, the meditation of our heart, the attitude of our spirit. God cause us in every way to re-examine these things, I pray, that we would look at them in light of your scripture, in light of the love that you've given us by your Holy Spirit. I don't ask that you would give us gifts. I ask you would convict us of sin. May your spirit come upon us this day, O oh God, I pray, that I, chiefest of sinners, that most of all would find grace and mercy in your sight, Father. For the sake of the people and those that are watching, I ask and I pray, dear Lord Jesus, have your way in us, that you would cause us to turn again to you, that we would listen one more time, that we would pay attention with our heart, and that we would meditate with our soul, that we would understand what you're trying to say, what you're speaking today, what we're not hearing, and what we're not doing. So God, I pray, forgive us. Forgive us, O oh God, and help us, for we have sinned and turned away from the very living God that you are. Help us, Lord, to not hate, for we are guilty. Forgive us.